I believe in miracles because I believe in God. You are responsible before God for today. God wants to show His power and His greatness in our lives. Greetings in the name of the Lord. So glad you can join us for the Ernest Angley Hour. Today we have good music and singing, and I have a message for you. God wants you to prosper. This is Bible, friend, and it's the truth. But His prosperity goes beyond just finances. He will prosper you in all ways, spiritually, physically, and financially. Learn more about how God wants to prosper you. But first, it's Rocky and the Singing Men's Quartet. He's the Miracle Man. I'm so happy that I want to shout. Jesus came in and the devil went out. He reached way down, grabbed a hold on me. And I'm so glad that he set me free. I never thought my life could feel this way. And it keeps getting better every passing day. Oh, I'm so happy that it makes me want to cry. False prophets fell down, they cut themselves, but Elijah prayed, oh, the fire fell. And he said, 
I'll have victory, I won't see defeat Oh, with God on the throne, I am not alone I've got faith When you stand with God, you're a majority Oh, the crowds will fight, but they won't succeed They will fail and run Ooh, God has won Oh, stand When you've done all to do, just stand Oh, stand When you've done all to do, then stand Take your stand You'll have victory, you won't see defeat Oh, with God on the throne, you are not alone You have Stand with God, you're a majority Oh, the crowds will fight, but they won't succeed They will fail and run Ooh, God has won 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 You and God have won The title of this message is, God Wants You to Prosper. He wants you to prosper in a variety of ways, but there are three particular ways we are going to focus on tonight in which God wants you to prosper. And I take you to 3 John, verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. The Lord desires prosperity for His children. First and foremost, prosperity in soul, mind, and body. Jesus' divine mission on earth was to fulfill the plan of redemption and give power to make people sons and daughters of God. By Jesus' death and resurrection, humanity was provided an opportunity to become members of the family of God. In other words, to be heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And this divine heritage is clearly laid out in detail in the New Testament will, which includes power over sin, sicknesses, diseases, and all mental oppression. Now, the authority which establishes the New Testament will and the power that enforces or enacts the benefits in this will for God's children is the divine blood of Jesus sacrificed at Calvary. That blood established the will, and that blood is the power that enforces the will for God's children. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21, 22, and 24. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. As the Son of Man, Jesus became our elder brother and our example, our pattern to follow. He bore our sins on the tree so that our souls could prosper. The soul prospering. How? Freedom from sin's dominion. Prospering in the holiness and righteousness of God. Prospering in a way that our lives may be well-pleasing to God. Jesus also went to the whipping post 
Stripes were placed upon his back. Flesh fell, the blood flowed. He was beaten and bruised at the whipping post so that our bodies may prosper with good health. Just as the soul prospers in good spiritual health. Child of God, do you believe this to be your divine heritage? Do you believe this to be the will of God for you? I'm not speaking to anyone else, those around you, in front of you. You, as an individual. You know, many Christians do not receive their full divine heritage. That is, being healing and prosperity for the body. And that's because they have not been taught this particular part of the divine heritage. And mainly that's because so much of the emphasis in churches is placed on prosperity for the soul and prosperity in finances. In fact, there are people who believe that it is actually God's will for them to be sick or that it's God's will for a loved one close to them to be sick. God doing this to keep them humble. But this is the deceit of Lucifer, which directly contradicts the New Testament will of God. That process of sickness coming from God to keep his children humble, that goes directly against the price that Jesus paid at the whipping post. It goes directly against the heritage, the New Testament will that Jesus purchased with his blood. God has his ways of bringing humility into the lives of his children, none of which includes sickness and disease. God, he provides humility through one of the nine fruits of the Spirit, meekness. Humility comes into a person's life through Bible fasting, especially long fasts, going many days, even 40 days at a time. Such fasting will bring a wonderful spirit of humility. And then there's the salting of fire, the trial of your faith, tribulations. If handled properly, will take you deeper into God and bring a great spirit of humility, but not sickness, not disease. Sicknesses and diseases are works of Satan and his kingdom against the body, designed by Satan to inflict pain, suffering, and even death upon the body. Just as sin is a work of Satan against the soul, which is designed to inflict pain and suffering in a person's life and inevitably lead them to spiritual death, death for the soul. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus very purpose in this world was to destroy the works of Satan. Sin and sickness are both works of Satan that Jesus came to earth to destroy by the power of his divine blood sacrifice. Now, for a moment, I want to take you back into the Old Testament. Under the law of Moses, here, God revealed his will for humanity. In the book of of Exodus, excuse me, the book of Exodus, on multiple occasions, if you study, God made a covenant of healing and physical prosperity with Israel. He would reiterate this covenant numerous times, reinforcing it because it was important to God and he wanted it to be important to his people. However, this covenant was 
on condition that they serve the Lord and obey His commands under the law. Exodus 23, 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and He shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Think of it. The Lord not only promised healing, He promised to keep sickness away from them, that it would not even afflict them. In the Old Testament, Israel was God's chosen people. Their divine heritage was found written in the law of Moses. And it, part of that heritage included no sickness and disease, healing and good health, prosperity for the body, on condition. You know, many times when a will is written, there are conditions that the benefactor has to meet in order to receive the benefits of the will. So too, with God's will, His will in the Old Testament under the law of Moses. All of these benefits were theirs on condition of obedience to the Word of God, to the law. Well, so it is today. There's a perfect parallel because under grace, under the New Testament will, born again children of God, God's chosen people today have a divine heritage. And it's under the New Testament and it includes the same. However, it is not by the law of Moses, but something greater. It is by the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ at Calvary. Again, on condition. On condition that they serve the Lord and obey the love commandments established, laid out in the New Testament will. So let's examine more parallels between Israel, God's chosen people under the law, and children of God today under the New Testament, under grace. The Old Testament law has many types or many examples that foreshadow what was to come, what would be living reality through the blood of Jesus in the New Testament. An example we find located in Exodus chapters 11 and 12. In chapter 11, God determines to bring one final plague upon Egypt that would cause Pharaoh to finally release the Israelites from slavery once and for all. And on a certain night at midnight, God would go forth through Egypt, the whole land, and the firstborn of every man and beast would be killed. From Pharaoh's house to the lowest slave and all the livestock. However, in Exodus chapter 12, we read that God gives his people a remedy. Protection, safety. And it's given, this plan is given to Moses. Every household is to take a male lamb of the first year. This lamb is to be without blemish. They are to kill the lamb, take the blood and apply it to the side post and upper post on the outside of each house. And then the meat would be roasted and eaten with unleavened bread. These directions instituted the feast of the Passover. And the Bible tells us when the Lord went throughout all Egypt at midnight and he saw the blood on the doorposts, he passed over that house and death never entered. However, every house without the lamb's blood suffered death of the firstborn. The lamb's blood represents the blood of Jesus in the New Testament. The Lamb of God who would come into this world to save humanity from eternal death. 
Think a moment. If an animal's blood under the law, which was a token or a representation of Jesus' blood that would be sacrificed in the future, if animal's blood could possess such power and authority, what power and authority does the blood of Jesus possess now that has already been sacrificed? The price already paid for us who live under grace in the New Testament. Another example under the law is Numbers chapter 21. In the wilderness, the disobedient children of God were being afflicted. Fiery serpents spread throughout the people, bringing pain, suffering, and death among the nation. And these fiery serpents, they represent the devil and his works among disobedient, sinful humanity. So there's a great problem, and Moses goes to God. And God instructs Moses, make a serpent of brass, hang it upon a pole, and whoever has been bitten, if they will look upon that serpent on the pole, they shall live. And so it was. That serpent of brass on the pole represented Jesus, a type of Jesus on the cross. And as the serpent was cursed in the Garden of Eden for causing humanity to go into sin. Jesus was cursed on the tree, bearing all of our sins and all of our sicknesses in his body, so that whosoever will look upon him, believe upon him, and his sacrifice shall live and receive prosperity, soul, mind, and body the power in the blood of Jesus. Even Jesus acknowledged this when he was here on earth in John chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The healing and prosperity manifested under the law in the Old Testament was a token of the living reality to come through Jesus Christ and the New Testament. Today, under the New Testament, Satan has no right to touch God's property. In other words, those who are, are obedient to the will and word of God. Remember, each will is conditional for God's children. It's their heritage, it's their right, on condition. As the Son of Man, Jesus coming to earth, he demonstrated God's will for humanity during his ministry. We find in the 13th chapter of Luke, a woman bent over, could not straighten up, stand up straight for 18 years. Jesus called it Satan's bondage, a work of Satan. He laid hands on her and she was set free. In John chapter 5, after Jesus healed the crippled man, born crippled, he instructed the man to go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon him. Two things to note in Jesus' instruction. One, the prosperity of the soul means not going back into sin. Two, if you do go back into sin, you will lose that prosperity and not only lose it, but something much worse will afflict you. Matthew chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Examine for yourself Jesus' ministry. In all four Gospels, the central theme was ministering to the sick and diseased. 
and those who are possessed by evil spirits. Jesus placed great emphasis on prosperity and good health for the body as well as for the soul. And before Jesus ascended into heaven, he ordained his believers, his followers, to carry on with the same ministry, the same gospel, and the same works. In Mark chapter 16, verses 17 and 18, Jesus said, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now let us examine how the church carried on with the ministry of Christ, which further emphasizes the will of God for humanity to prosper and be in good health, soul, mind, and body. In Acts chapter 3, here Peter and John are at the gate beautiful, going into Jerusalem to worship in the temple, standing before a crippled man who's begging for money. Peter declares, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. This man, he did not need financial prosperity at this moment. He needed much more. He needed prosperity and good health for his body. In the name of Jesus, the man was made to walk. He stood up and walked and went into the temple, leaping and praising the Lord. And as a result of this man receiving prosperity in body, as a result, 5,000 souls prospered because 5,000 souls came into the kingdom. Ernest Angley Hour has been welcomed into the homes of families across the globe. Hallelujah! You live in the blood name of Jesus. Oh, that is much better. You have to let him work it. I'm an alcoholic. Do you want to be free? Yes. Loose her. He's healed me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Watch more episodes of the Ernest Angley Hour on our YouTube channel. God work his ways perfectly. God work don't interfere. Did you ever consider what you owe God for your life? From the day you were born, He wanted you to accept His glorious and eternal gift, Jesus Christ. Plus, many physical and financial gifts Stop for a minute and consider, will you honor His love gifts through your offerings and ties to this ministry? Every day and every hour, we work to bless others everywhere. Please join us and let God's smile be upon your life. In your path, Lord, each and every day. Lead me by your spirit, Lord. I walk in your love. Show me your way, Lord. Show me your way. Oh, show me your way, Lord. Yes, show me your way. I must walk in your path, Lord, each and every day. Lead me by your spirit, Lord. I walk in your love. Show me your way, Lord. Show me your way. While I'm on life's 
journey, I must have your will. I will look to my Savior while I'm quiet and still. As I trust in your footsteps, I know your spirit will lead me. I know you won't leave me or forsake me in time of need. Show me your way, Lord. Mm, show me your way. I must walk in your path, Lord, each and every day. Lead me by your spirit, Lord. I walk in your love. Show me your way, Lord. Show me your way. The path, though no uncertain, I will trust in your way. I have full assurance, you won't lead me astray. As I travel each day, Lord, my faith in you will stay. I will be obedient, so show me your way. Show me your way, Lord. Yeah, show me your way. I must walk in your path, Lord, each and every day. Lead me by your spirit, Lord. I walk in your love. Show me your way, Lord. Yes, show me your way. As your spirit leads me, I will hide my heart in thee. With great love and reassurance, your faith strengthens me. As your spirit leads me, I will hide my heart in thee. Through your great love and amazing grace, I know one day I'll see. Your face, show me your way, Lord. Show me your way. I must walk in your path, Lord, each and every day. Lead me by your spirit, Lord. I walk in your love. Show me your way, Lord. Show me your way. in your path, Lord, each and every day. Lead me by your Spirit, Lord. I walk in your love. Show me your way. 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 One day I'll see the King. Show me your way. Look upon His way. Before show his throne, for you show me your way, way of everlasting life. Way. way of everlasting life. Show me your way, show me your way. Show me your way. Oh, I love that song by Living Waters. Now, taking you back for the conclusion of the message, God wants you to prosper. Acts chapter 5 tells us that by the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And the sick were brought forth and laid in the streets, that at the very least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow them. And they were healed. But it was not Peter's shadow that healed them. It was the people's faith in operation. Faith in God heals the sick. Faith in Peter's master healed the people. When Peter's shadow covered them, they released their faith, and God moved to prosper their bodies with good health. And again, as I say, as the people's bodies prospered, souls too prospered. Because Acts chapter 6 says in two different places that the number of Jesus' disciples multiplied. Miracles and healings bring people to God. The prosperity and good health that Jesus purchased with his sacrifice, it's not only for the soul and for the body, it's for the mind. 
And this is a part of the divine heritage that every child of God should stress and, and take part in in this final hour. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Oppression, depression, anxiety, all of these are works of Satan. All of these are not God's will for his children. Children of God are not to live a life of mental bondage and torment. It is not the will of God. It is not their divine heritage. But from the time we are born, we always let our surrounding circumstances dictate our mental condition. If all is well around us, our mental condition is wonderful. If things are bad around us, our mental condition goes bad. It's not to be. That's not the divine heritage Jesus paid for. Jesus provided joy unspeakable and full of glory, peace that passes all understanding. And it has nothing to do with the life around you. It's the divinity, the prosperity within you that produces it. Or how else could those testimonies in the Fox's Book of Martyr happen where people would rejoice in the Lord as they died for the sake of Christ? They possessed the complete heritage that Jesus paid for. They were reaping 100% of all of its benefits because they met every condition, even to the point of laying their lives on the line for Christ. They gave all, and the heritage was theirs in its fullness. God's heritage for his children is power, love, and a sound mind. It does not get any clearer than that. And it's clearly laid out in the New Testament will. 2 Timothy 1.7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. If God doesn't give it, who's given it? The devil. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. Fear is very oppressive. Fear is can put a person in mental gridlock. They can't even function. God has nothing to do with fear. Fear is oppressive. The devil works and manifests through fear, just as God works and manifests through faith. Let that sink in. When something is afflicting your life, what is your mental state? Are you mentally ready and capable of receiving from your divine heritage? Or is your mind a stumbling block to receiving from your divine heritage? Many bad things can happen in a person's life when they live in a spirit of fear. Just as many good things can happen in a person's life when they live by faith. Do not let the devil rob you of your divine heritage in Christ, which is a sound mind of love and peace. Jesus' human mind did not struggle with the oppression of fear, and he endured more than any of us. Examine his life. He had no fear. He's at the age of 12, alone in a mammoth city called Jerusalem, his parents, days journey away. He's not in fear, wondering what's going to become of him. He was alone in this city for three days, but he was not afraid. Instead, he was about his father's business. In the wilderness, 
Jesus came face to face with Satan. There was no fear. Even when Satan took him to a mountaintop, took him to the pinnacle of a temple, no fear. He was not afraid. Instead, he used the word of God, the written word, and put him to flight. When Jesus met the man possessed with legion of devils, naked, out of his mind, crazy, no man could tame him. Jesus didn't run in fear. Instead, those devils were afraid of him. Now, I know you may be saying and thinking to yourself, he's Jesus, he's the Son of God. Yes, that's true, he is the Son of God. But remember, Jesus came to make us sons and daughters of God. And the same power to resist the devil and make him flee that Jesus used, that's our heritage, is it not? John 1, 12, But as many as received him, meaning Jesus, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. James 4, 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Resist his temptations. Resist his mind battles. Resist when he seeks to afflict your body. Through the blood, through the word, through the divine testament, the New Testament will, that divine heritage. Submit yourself to the whole New Testament will. All of it. And receive the full heritage. Children of God have no reason to fear Satan and his kingdom. That is, if they're completely submitted to God and his word. Children of God have no reason to fear death. Again, look at Jesus. On the cross, dying. Yet he was praying for his murderers. He forgave the sins of a man who was on a cross next to him. He was not afraid. The prosperity, good health for soul, mind, and body that Jesus brought for humanity, Jesus called it abundant life. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Child of God, the abundant life is your divine heritage. Laid out in the New Testament will, purchased by the blood sacrifice of Christ. However, to receive the fullness for soul, mind, and body, the fullness of your divine heritage, you must live by faith. Not use it, live it. Live by it. To receive the full heritage. Romans 1.17 For therein is the righteousness of God revealed, from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. If you are justified before God, meaning you are justified in receiving all of your divine heritage, live by faith. Not in fear, not in doubt. Live by faith. Not in grumbling and complaining, live by faith. Not in feelings, live by faith. And the complete heritage is yours. Jesus revealed this during his ministry on earth. For example, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 29, according to your faith, be it unto you. Luke 18, 42, receive thy sight, thy faith hath saved thee. Luke 7, 50, thy faith hath saved thee. 
go in peace. Matthew 9, 22. Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Jesus didn't even take credit. Your faith did it. The measure of God's faith that's in you, that it did it. Matthew 15, 28. O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. That's power. That's faith. Faith in God. Faith in his word. Faith in the blood sacrifice of Jesus. A child of God's divine heritage is a heritage of divine faith. However, if we do not believe, we will not receive. You can go to church your whole life. You can quote all the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. You can stand and preach in the pulpit. Doesn't matter. Without faith, you will not receive the full heritage in the New Testament will. We will not receive, the Bible says, even if we let our faith waver. James chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. James was practical, and he was straightforward. And he told it the way it needed to be told. If you waver even a little bit, don't even think you're going to receive the heritage, the full heritage of blessings that Jesus paid for. It's all according to faith. Be it unto thee according to thy faith. All things are possible to him that believeth. And if you believe, you will receive. Friend, listening to this message, do you enjoy the fullness of the abundant life? Do you enjoy the heritage, the divine heritage laid out in the New Testament? Is it manifesting in your life daily? According to the word, the heritage that Jesus paid for with his blood. What a terrible price was paid so that you could have abundant life. What a terrible price that God had paid to make you a part of the family of God so that you could reap such wonderful, incredible benefits, divine benefits, not of this world, but of heaven, a part of your life. Only believe. And the word of God declares that if we confess our sins, God is faithful. He is just to forgive us. Because by our mouth we make confession unto salvation and with the heart. We believe unto righteousness. From your heart you must believe. And if you are living beneath your privilege, if there is any sin in your life, in your soul, that's where the prosperity needs to start before it can spread to the body and then spread to the mind. Let the prosperity start in the soul. Let your soul be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Let that blood sacrifice that Jesus made at Calvary work for you to deliver you and set you free from all sin, guilt, and unrighteousness to give you a born-again experience, a spiritual rebirth made brand new on the inside so that that new soul can prosper, can prosper in the freedom and liberty of Jesus Christ. Pray this prayer with me now and mean it from your heart. Say, O oh God, I confess all of my sin before you. Forgive me, Father. I will serve you the rest of my life. And I believe there is power 
in the blood of Jesus that washes away all of my sin. Say, come into my heart, Jesus. Come into my heart, dear Jesus. And amen. Friend, if you meant that prayer, if you believed in your heart, the prayer that you pray, Jesus is yours. That means you're a child of God. That means you have a divine heritage from God. And part of which includes healing for your body. For by his stripes ye were healed. 2,000 years ago, Jesus paid the price. The heritage is yours. It's time to receive by faith. It's time to stake your claim, your part of this heritage, the prosperity for your body through the blood stripes of Jesus. And again, as I read tonight, Jesus said his believers would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. They would prosper with good health. Friend, I'm the Lord's believer. Reverend Steve is many believers in our midst. And many of you, you put your prayer requests in the comment section. Others, you're sick in body. Maybe you can't get to the screen. Put, lift up your hand in faith believing. And those of you who can, put your hand against mine on the screen. It's a form of laying on of hands. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne of grace. God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for providing him to prosper our souls, our minds, and our bodies. We thank you for his blood sacrifice at the whipping post and on Calvary. We thank you, O oh God, for that healing virtue that flows to your children through the blood. God, lay a healing hand upon each one. Let that healing virtue from the blood flow to each one now. In the holy blood name of Jesus, heal. Heal each one. Heal and deliver. Destroy every work of Satan in their body. And Lord, raise them up in good health through the blood stripes of Jesus. And we give you the honor, the praise, and the glory, and we thank you for Jesus. And amen. And friend, watch every sign of improvement and stand by faith. Stand by faith in your heart upon your heritage. Know who you are in Christ. Know your heritage and will. And let and reap the benefits by faith. By faith, be made whole. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost, that's an important part of the heritage. Acts chapter 2, verses 38 and 39. For every child of God, the promise of the Holy Ghost is yours. God calls it a gift. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is God's gift to his obedient children. Friend, you can receive this gift. Now that your soul is prospered through the blood and prospering in your body, you can prosper with this wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost. But before I pray for you, those of you here in the auditorium tonight, if any of you are in need of prayer, you're sick in body, you have a great need in your life, this is your opportunity to go over to the side. I'll meet you over there to minister to you. And the rest of you, you can stand to your feet, come to the altar, present yourself before the Lord, let the Lord anoint you. Let him bless you. Let him prosper you in greater ways. And if you are a child of God, by faith, stand on your heritage. Study your heritage. Know what the will says. Know what is rightfully yours. And live by it daily. And those of you joining us online, if this is your opportunity, I'm going to pray for you to receive the Holy Ghost, that you may prosper with this special gift. And oh, how your life will prosper with the Holy Ghost. Prosper even in greater ways, soul, mind, and body, with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And wherever you're at, 
whether you're at home, wherever, lift up your hands unto the Lord. I'm going to call an anointing down upon you to receive God's gift for your life and start praising the Lord, lifting up praise unto Jesus, glorifying Him for what He's done, glorifying Jesus. And by faith, open your heart's door to receive this gift from God. And when the Holy Ghost does come in, He will speak in an unknown language through you. He will take over your tongue. That's the evidence, the sign that He has come. Lord, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I bring this people before you now. God, anoint them to receive your gift, the gift of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I call this anointing down. Anoint them, O God, in soul, mind, and body to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Friend, I'm expecting God to move for that need in your life, whatever it may be. Again, God wants you to prosper. And when he does move for you, we'd love to hear about it. Please take a moment, let us know. Send us your testimony by way of email. You can do so, testimonies at ernestangely.org. And friend, just taking a moment, I want to encourage you to stand by this Jesus ministry. We're seeking to win more souls for the Lord, to shine the light of gospel truth, not only in the United States, but different countries around the world. That's what we're doing, and you can be a part of it. You can go to our website, ernestangely.org, and there you can donate. It's safe, it's secure, right online. And friend, when you have the opportunity, please pay us a visit at Grace Cathedral. We always welcome people to worship the Lord with us. You don't have to be a member. We have services every weekend, three services in fact, on Friday night and two services on Sunday. You will enjoy the Word of God going forth in song and through preaching and teaching. And if you can't be with us in person, please join our service live through the live stream. Friend, just go to our YouTube channel, Ernest Angley Ministries, or our Facebook page. There you can connect with us and enjoy the service right from your home or wherever you're at. Maybe you're on business, you're on vacation, you can still join our services. And if you have a prayer request right there in the comments section during the service, put your prayer request in. We will pray over those requests at the end of the services. And God is moving for people that way, and He will for you as well. And when you have the opportunity, check out all of our social media content, including our Instagram page. We're continually adding new spiritual content to bless you in a special way. And don't forget about our Good Friday Easter service coming up. Oh, what a time in the Lord that will be, that powerful Holy Communion service, March 29th. It will bless your soul. We'll see you next week.